Hi, this is George from the Return of the King channel. I shot a lot of weddings as a wedding photographer, and I never had a wedding where the bride wasn't excited about her wedding. I love shooting weddings, and I shot some really amazing weddings. This is a photo from one of them. They reminded me of how great our wedding in heaven will be. In the comments section in my last video, Someday Hero discovered something that really adds to the story in the heavens. And the more I looked, the more I found. It's about the coming of the groom to get his bride. It's in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17 that we are told that the Lord himself will descend from heaven. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. In about the middle of August, before the sun rises, the bright morning star, Jesus, is in the constellation of heaven, Cancer. 1 Thessalonians 4.16 For the Lord himself will descend from heaven. The Lord, the bright morning star, will begin his descent to catch away his bride to bring her to heaven. It's in Revelation 22.16 and 17 that we are told that Jesus is the bright morning star. I am the root, the descendant of David, the bright morning star, the spirit and the bride say come. The bride is beckoning Christ, her groom, to come. And so the groom leaves heaven to get his bride. By 828 Venus, the bright morning star, is no longer in heaven. 828, a little one, is the beginning of Teshuvah. The period of time from the first of Elul to the 10th of Tishri, Yom Kippur, is known as Teshuvah. The season of Teshuva is a 40-day period starting on Elul 1 and ending on Tishri 10. It consists of 30 days of preparation for the first 10 days of Tishri, referred to as the High Holy Days. Teshuva is a Hebrew word that means repentance and return. During the first 30 days, we should be in an attitude of repentance awaiting the return of the Messiah. Each morning of the 40 days of Teshuvah, after the normal morning prayers, a shofar is blown and Psalm 27 is read. Psalm 27 is a warning that the time of Jacob's trouble is approaching. However, those who look to God have nothing to fear. One thing have I asked of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. Then Ezekiel 33, 1-7 is read. If I bring the sword upon a land, and the people of the land take a man from among them, and make him their watchman, and if he sees the sword coming upon the land, and blows the trumpet, and warns the people, then if anyone who hears the sound of the trumpet does not take warning, and the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. If the watchman sees the sword coming, but doesn't warn, the blood is then on the watchman's hand. From Zephaniah, The great day of the Lord is near, near and hastening fast. The sound of the day of the Lord is bitter. The mighty man cries aloud there. A day of wrath is that day, a day of distress and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Seek the Lord, all you humble of the land, who do his just commands. Seek righteousness, seek humility. Perhaps you may be hidden on the day of the anger of the Lord. During Teshuva, usually on the day prior to Rosh Hashanah, the shofar is blown. This time it is blown with about 100 very short blasts, followed by one very long blast. Then the congregation says, The gates of heaven are now open. This represents the blowing of the trump that raises the dead and raptures the believers. This occurs only when the gates of heaven are open. This is from Ken Johnson's book, Ancient Messianic Festivals and the Prophecies They Reveal. Venus is next headed into the constellation of Leo, the lion of the tribe of Judah. In the constellation of the king, Venus, the bright morning star, goes into conjunction with Regulus, the king star, before the lion of the tribe of Judah opens the seven seals and releases the four horsemen. 
he comes for his bride. At dawn on the 27th, Venus is in the constellation of Virgo, the bride of Christ. At Christ's birth, Virgo represented the virgin who bore Christ. In Revelation chapter 12, Virgo represents Israel, who sometime after the child is raptured, flees into the wilderness to a place prepared by God. At the rapture, the constellation Virgo represents the bride of Christ, the church. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. The bridegroom has arrived to take his bride home with him to heaven, accompanied by the archangel. This is the view of the heavens at sunset at the start of the Feast of Trumpets. In 1 Thessalonians 4.16, Paul says, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. Thirty days prior, on the first day of Teshuva, we saw the bright morning star, Jesus, leaving the constellation Cancer, representing heaven. The bright morning star is now in the constellation of Virgo, the bride of Christ, along with Mercury, representing the archangel. The bridegroom has come for his bride, along with his archangel. The trumpet of God is about to sound. The new moon on the Feast of Trumpets is known as Yom HaKessa. It means the day of concealment. The moon is in the constellation of the bride, who is about to be concealed. The two days of the Feast of Trumpets were looked at as one long day. The groom could come any time during the Feast of Trumpets. As the sun sets and twilight begins, the first two objects to appear in the darkening sky will be the crescent moon in the constellation of the bride and Jupiter in the constellation of the fishes, Pisces. The early Christians were called Pisces and Ichthus. The symbol of the Christian is the fish. It has taken Jupiter, the Christian, from the Revelation 12 sign, five years to arrive in the constellation of the fishes. Five is a number of grace in the Bible. The church age is known as the age of grace. The age of grace is closed by the rapture. To the left of the fishes is Aries, in Hebrew, Tale, the lamb. It's Christ, the lamb of God, who will snatch the Christians from the dragon in the sea. Just like in the account of the 153 fish, where the fish are brought to Jesus. The bands of the fish are on the neck of the dragon. It's the Holy Spirit-filled church who is restraining the dragon, Satan, and his followers. When we leave, Satan and the Antichrist will no longer be restrained. The new moon is in the same location as Jupiter was when the Revelation 12 sign reached its fulfillment. Symbolic of who will be concealed. As Virgo, the bride of Christ, and the moon disappear in the west, symbolic of being hidden away, Pisces, along with Jupiter, rises in the east, symbolic of our meeting with Christ in the air. And the dead in Christ will rise first, then we who are alive. There are two fishes. One represents the dead in Christ, the other those of us who are alive at this time. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. In 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 52, Paul tells us the feast day of the rapture, when we shall all be changed in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. The time of Christ, the Feast of Trumpets, was known as the festival of the last trump. The twinkling of an eye at the time of Christ was another name for twilight, so the rapture could very well happen at sunset, but I'd be prepared for any time during the Feast of Trumpets. It certainly looks like we have a wedding in our future, and that wedding is ours. Jesus wants as many people as possible at his wedding. So now's a good time to pray for the salvation of your unsaved friends and relatives. It's also a good time to prepare your hearts to meet your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who gave his life freely so we could have eternal life with him. I'm looking forward to that trumpet sound and meeting you all in the air. God bless.